Yeah, so I'm Alejandra, and as Jane said, I will present Exploring Attitudes and Preferences Towards Species at Risk in British Columbia. And this is the work I'm doing for my master's, so under the supervision of Jiang and Kai is on my committee. So first I'm gonna tell you about species at risk in BC. There are about 50,000 species um, described in British Columbia, excluding unicellular organisms. Um, about 4,000 of them have been assessed in terms of their conservation status. And under the Species at Risk Act, um, that has these four categories. Um, there are 199 um, species listed. Um, some are extirpated as the worst category, um, and then endangered, threatened, and species of special concern. Um, um, and I'm gonna tell you that most of my research in my master's is about sea otters. So I'll tell you the story that many of you probably have heard from Kai before or anyone working in our lab about this. Um, so I'll tell the story of sea otters in the west coast of Vancouver Island. So first, sea otters, um, the historical range of sea otters were um, that they ranked from northern Japan to southern California. Um, and due to intensive fur trade, um, especially during the occupation of Alaska for 126 years in the 1800s, um, sea otters were extirpated from um, most of their historical range with only some remnant populations in the Aleutian Islands. And in an effort to, oh, on, and the ecological role of sea otters like, is that they are top predators in their food chain and their food chain here I'm just showing part of the food chain, but they are top predators um, that predate heavily upon sea urchins, um, starfish, abalone, crabs, so a lot of shellfish um, that have an impact on kelp forests. Um, sea urchins are the main predators of um, kelp forests uh, that provide habitat for fish like salmon or halibut. So Without sea otters, um, there was a large increase in sea urchin populations that led to a decrease on kelp forests. And just to show you, um, uh, and what happened was that when um, you take away the, the top predator of food chain, um, you get an abundance of this other species and um, the fisheries context in the west coast of Vancouver Island was mostly um, indicating that fishermen were harvesting this shellfish species um, and this was defined uh, as fishing down the food web. So in an effort to reintroduce sea otters in the 70s, um, 89 sea otters were reintroduced in the west coast of Vancouver Island. The circles here in yellow show areas that where the sea otters can be found now. And when um, the sea otters are introduced, they predate heavily upon sea urchins, so then you have, again, um, more kelp forests. Um, so just to show you, this is an urchin barren, so it's without sea otters. This is how the habitat would look like. And then when the sea otters were introduced, or if you think about it, before they were extirpated in the first place, this is how the ecosystem would look like. Um, so as you can see, these are very different um, types of ecosystems. So this created conflict. So it was a story of conservation versus fisheries because on one hand, you have sea otters that people would claim they have existence value, so we want to have them. Um, they represent what natural ecosystems should look like because they were here before they extirpated them. Um, and they have tourism value. So people are willing to pay to go on sea otter watching tours. Um, but then they're in conflict with fisheries um, because they are uh, conflicting with fishermen, they cause rapid shellfish population declines, economic losses to fishermen, and um, cultural or traditional loss if 
the fishermen can no longer find the resources they used to harvest. So based on this um, story, this story has been also written in the news. Um, and this is a, an article from uh, the Vancouver, I oh know, the Globe and Mail. And uh, in the article it says, Jeannie Eckerd, a marine biologist at the University of Alaska, said sea otters were reintroduced in Alaska in the late 1960s. This is an incredible conservation success story. A species that was wiped out has come back. But that has led to concerns in fishing communities. I think sea otters are hated and they are shot in some places. So this is the context right now of the sea otters. Some are being shot. Um, we think it's uh, anger killing um, because they're in, in conflict with those fishermen. Uh, but they are still a species at risk, so they are still um, protected. Um, so based on that, we were wondering, and these are the research questions, um, how do people in British Columbia perceive sea otters? And how does messaging shape people's attitudes towards sea otters? So we wanted to see if we could first find what people think about them and then see if they had negative views, try to persuade them to think more positively about the otters. So the first question was how do people in British Columbia perceive sea otters? Um, we use Stephen Kellert's uh, typology of 10 basic attitudes towards wildlife to design uh, questionnaires. Stephen Kellert is uh, an emeritus professor in Yale and he has worked uh, for many years in studying people's uh, attitudes towards different species uh, in terms of conservation. Uh, and his typology says that people have most, people can have 10 different um, attitudes, basic attitudes. So one is aesthetic, so if people are primarily interested in, their, in species for their aesthetic appealing. Um, dominionistic, if they're interested in the mastery or control over animals. Um, ecologistic, if people are interested in the species and their relationship with other species and their habitats. Humanistic, if they are interested in species like pets. Um, moralistic, if they're interested in the primary, um, uh, primary interest on animal rights. Um, naturalistic, interest in outdoor activities. Um, negativistic, just negative attitudes, maybe fear or dislike. Um, and scientific, primary, uh, scientific primary interest in the biological facts. Um, utilitarian habitat, the, the um, practical value or of the land or water associated with wildlife. And utilitarian consumption, the practical value of the species. Um, so with these dimensions, we um, designed um, a questionnaire that had statements like this one, so for example, moralistic, we said, um, how much uh, do you agree with, with a statement like this? Sea otters should have clean waters to live in. Um, ecologistic, the presence of sea otters in a determined spot is a sign of a healthy environment. Utilitarian consumption, sea otters have to be controlled when they cause major economic losses to commercial fishermen. Utilitarian habitat, it is important to maintain healthy sea otter populations in order to maximize economic benefits from fisheries, and the dominionistic people occasionally have to hunt sea otters or they will lose their fear of people and increasingly become a problem. Um, so we surveyed 324 people, and um, here I'm gonna show um, a bean plot that is showing the all 10 attitudes that I just explained, and this ranges from minus five, so I, um, strongly disagree to five, strongly agree with the statements I just show you an example of. And this is what we found. So people have, how do I do? Sorry. People have mostly moralistic and ecologistic views of sea otters. So the people we surveyed are uh, concerned with sea otters and their rights. And um, they were agreeing with uh, statements that sea otters are important for their habitats. Um, and the lowest ones were negativistic, uh, dominionistic, and both utilitarian attitudes. So very few people um, uh, agreed with uh, statements that explore those attitudes. 
Then we also ask them, um, what do you consider sea otters to be? And probably many of you will agree with this view, but most people thought sea otters were cute and playful and intelligent, and very few people think that they're nasty, scary, or savage. So as you can see, people hold um, very positive uh, views or very positive views of sea otters. So then um, that answered that question. So then we wanted to see how does messaging shape people's attitudes towards sea otters. So we had three messages, um, a positive message that was showing the ecological benefits of sea otters. So what I said about the, uh, them bringing the kelp forest. Um, the negative message was when we presented them about the resource conflict with First Nations and local fishermen in the west coast of Vancouver Island. And we had a neutral condition that were, where we presented just biological facts of sea otters. So for example, their metabolic rate. Um, and uh, we did an experiment. So first, um, we had um, a, qu a questionnaire with 40 statements um, for, for each of the attitudes I mentioned before. Then um, we had three conditions. So we had a group of people only uh, viewing the positive message, the negative message, or the neutral message. Um, then we asked them the same questions again. Then we had behavioral questions. So for example, how much time do you spend in nature uh, in a regular weekend day? Um, and then we had demographic questions. So here we had a pre-message and post-message um, condition that we could compare so we could test how the message was shaping their attitudes. And we did this with uh, 324 people. And then we had a second condition where we had uh, people first just viewing um, positive, negative, or neutral messages, and then the same uh, questionnaire. So we had these two comparisons of the two conditions where we could test um, the, po the two post-message conditions, and we found um, no difference um, between those. So then we just, um, we just checked the first condition to see how, how the message was actually shaping their pre-post um, attitudes. So here I'm just gonna show uh, the results of the first condition, or, or the first treatment. Um, so here we, we presented um, those messages and we found um, that when people viewed the negative message, they were more likely to agree with statement, with utilitarian uh, habitat statements. So people were more likely to agree um, with facts that attempt to manage sea otters for the harm that they're causing. And we also found that the neutral message, so the line here shown in blue that is dropping, had um, uh, an effect in making people think more positively about them. Um, we also found the same effect in the utilitarian consumption um, attitudes where the negative message made them more likely to agree with statements like, we need to manage the otters because they're harming the fishermen. And we found um, also a significant difference in when people viewed the um, positive message, so when they saw the kelp forest um, message. And then we found also that the negative message had an effect in making people want to hunt them more. Um, so yeah, these results were very interesting at first um, because also when we asked people, how convincing do you think this message is? Uh, we found that people rated the negative message as the least convincing of all. So it was the least convincing, but it was the one that caused more um, or like had a larger effect in changing people's views of sea otters. And then, um, then we had another um, experiment um, and our research questions were what are people's implicit and explicit preferences of sea otters and other species at risk in British Columbia and how are these preferences related to the willingness to pay for conservation. Um, so here uh, we compared uh, four species, so the sea otter again, the American badger, 
the yellow-breasted chat, and the caribou. So the sea otter is uh, currently managed as a species of special concern. The American badger and the yellow-breasted chat are classified as endangered, and there's a species at risk act, and the caribou is classified as threatened. Um, so in terms of like my, my first slide, the most endangered ones would be the American badger and the yellow-breasted chad, then the caribou and with the sea otter. Um, in this design, we had first an implicit association task, um, and it's something like this. So we have students um, or participants in the lab where we present them in a screen and we show them um, paired comparisons of, um, in this case, two species, so for example, caribou uh, and sea otters, and they view pictures of uh, these animals, and they also view good words like awesome, uh, amazing, and bad words like bad, uh, ugly. <laughs> so we, we ask them um, to classify when they see pictures of, for example, caribou and bad words, use the E key, or where they see the sea otter or good words, use the I key. And then we switch them, so then we present the other category with the good or bad words. And we record the response time. Um, and the idea of this task is that if you have a an implicit preference for one or the other ca category, you're gonna be faster at classifying that category with good, um, with good words. Um, and if you dislike one of the categories, you are gonna be faster at classifying them with um, bad words. Um, so we, present we did that experiment and then we also had, um, after that, the, the participants went to a computer and then they filled a survey that had free association questions. So we asked them, what are the three words that come to mind when you think of caribou, for example? Um, then we asked them, how much do you like this animal? So rate from not at all to a lot. Um, then we asked them, how much are you willing to donate um, to conserve these species. And then we had demographic questions. Um, so here we had, we ran 55 participants in the lab and we had a comparison between the implicit preferences and the explicit. So what they're actually, how they view them in terms of good and bad and how, what they self-report as how much they like those species. Um, so the implicit preferences we found, um, th this are the mean, the, Y-axis here are D-scores, so it's uh, a measure of implicit association, where is we have the mean of a category paired with good words minus the mean of the same category paired with bad words divided by the standard deviation. Um, and we did that for each of the species, and we found that implicitly there's no difference. Um, so implicitly people like all four species the same, even though the badger here um, as you can see, it's below the overall mean, so it's trending as being the least like, but there are no significant um, differences. But then when we asked them explicitly, how much do you like this animal? We found that people say that they like the sea otter the most. Th they like the sea otter more than all the other um, three species, and they um, rank the caribou as the second one, but they like the caribou more than the badger. And then badger and chat um, are last, but are not different. So explicitly, um, the sea otter is the one that they like the most. Um, and then we asked them, name three words that come to mind when you think of um, sea otter. So the most common word was cute, where 55% of people answer that. And then water, wet, whiskers. So let me, let me try this one with you. So if I say, what are the three words that come to mind when you think of badger? One volunteer, tough, okay, someone else? Smelly, Smelly. yeah. Um, the most common ones were cute, stripes, furry, claws, skunk. So Melinda, yours would call it under skunk, I think. <laughs> um, with the bird, yeah, with the yellow-breasted chat, they said <laughs> bird, small, singing song, um, yellow even though it's called yellow-breasted chat. Uh, also, like they, when people saw these images, they were all black and white. So this yellow is just because we told them what are the first words that come to mind when, you, when I say yellow-breasted chat, right? 
uh, under caribou they think big, fast, antlers, large, strong. So if you, if you think, I, I mean I won't um, delve too much into this, but this is very interesting because they, they see all these animals in a very different way, right? Um, so we coded again all the words um, in terms of positive and negative associations. Um, I mean the ones that were positive or negative associations. And we found that the American badger is the only one that has more negative than positive associations. So a lot of people would say also tough or mean, uh, aggressive. Um, smelly was actually there. <laughs> um, skunk, if you think that's a negative association. Um, sea otter was the one with the most, uh, or vastly more positive than negative. Everybody has pretty much really positive views of sea otters as I presented before. And then caribou and yellow-breasted chad um, are bo both have more positive than negative associations, but they are viewed less in those terms than the other two. Um, so that answers that question. And then to answer how are these preferences related to the willingness to pay for conservation. So we asked them just plain like that, like how much money are you willing to donate to conservation? And most of um, our respondents answer between zero and $300. Um, so the, we took out the outliers. So this um, has three less participants than the rest of the study. Um, but we did um, a multiple regression where we predicted the willingness to pay for conservation with familiarity. We also asked them how familiar are you with this species with the explicit preference. So what I said before, like how much do you like this animal? With the discourse, so the implicit attitude and the endangered ranking. So how endangered do you think this species is? Um, and what we found is that only explicit preference, so explicit likeness is the only one that predicted the willingness to pay for conservation. Um, yeah, and we also found that familiarity is correlated with explicit preferences. So people are people tend to like more what they're more familiar with. Uh, and we also ran partial correlations um, where we predict where we correlated the willingness to pay for conservation with explicit preference uh, controlling for familiarity and with familiarity controlling for, for explicit preference. And we found that explicit preference has a larger effect, but um, all three are correlated. Um, so the conclusions and implications. One that is not very <laughs> good, but it's true, was that the negative message was more effective than the positive or neutral messages in changing people's attitudes. Um, so we think uh, messaging is important uh, and should be included in the design of conservation campaigns. Uh, only we need to find a way where we can write a negative message that will actually help the species, not in this case it, it helped it so that people would like to call the otters more. Um, that's not what I would like to promote. Um, we also found that people have different implicit versus explicit preferences. Um, and that explicit preference predicts the willingness to pay for conservation. And what we would like to do um, next, maybe not in this master's degree, but someday, uh, is to test this messaging um, experiment uh, with local communities that would actually be directly affected by the sea otters. Um, and yeah, thank you to my lab and maybe Ed, Samir, Terry, who helped design this. Um, Stephen Killard, who helped us with the questionnaires, um, Robin, uh, who helped us um, with understanding this more uh, conservation perspective, and Clarice, who also helped me for, with the design of the questionnaires. So yeah, now questions? <laughs> yeah. Lucy? In which one? <laughs> Yeah, so with the messaging study in both of my conditions, we use UBC students. In fact, some of you answered my survey, so thank you for being <laughs> data points. Um, we were, um, yeah, so students, so undergrad students in psychology, students, graduate students, um, some of the students uh, when I was TAing. Um, and then in the, in the lab we run uh, also students, but then we um, did 
an extra experiment with 500 people on MTurk, so Mechanical Turk. Um, it's like um, a recruiting source online that you can get people from all over the world, mostly US and India, and we found the same um, effect. Yeah, Guillaume? Well, but there are still residents of British Columbia, and they are still a uh, demographically diverse group, right? Like, they're not, yeah, I guess we, I, I could write it like that, but um, they're, yeah, or maybe in Yeah, yeah, maybe like that. Yeah, because they're still, like, I feel that like this, for example, this group here is still different than, I don't know, some, uh, undergrads in psychology or so all, the all my students in EOSC. So it is still diverse, but we're still in part of the same university. So yeah, maybe in Vancouver. Validate. Yeah, but I used the MTurk for the um, second experiment, not the messaging experiment. So I used this, the MTurk for the Badger, Sea Otter, chat experiment. Gazelle? <laughs> yeah, I will. Oh, but Gasal and then Molly. No, I don't think so. I think um, maybe like in in the messaging one, I would say maybe less than a fourth had more um, environmental focus. I, I wouldn't say there. But, but it is true that people, like the people I surveyed, had the moralistic and ecologistic as their prominent attitudes. But I don't think they're environmentally, necessarily environmentally focused or oriented. Like I guess in here, if, like if I only sampled our department, then that would be the case, but I had like, as I said, like people from a bunch of other parts of the university. Liz? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sea otters? <laughs> Um, I guess there there is a trade-off uh, from an ecological perspective because they live in the same system. Is that what you're going to? To the, yeah. Yeah. Well, the way um, I thought about this was that I wanted species at risk um, in British Columbia, but they are not um, not explicitly, but they, they are competing for resources for conservation. So like, for example, if you think about the province um, writing recovery plans, they are writing recovery plans for all of this. And right now they're allocating uh, money uh, for the chat or the badger or the or all of them. Uh, but they are allocating different money. So I was thinking more in terms of that because I was thinking about the implications for conservation. So I didn't want, like the sea urchins are, like th the sea urchins in this system aren't endangered, but the abalone are. So that would be interesting if I have used maybe abalone. But then it's too different because abalone don't have eyes or they, you know, it's very different how people think about uh, an abalone uh, compared to what they think of a sea otter, right? I think. Yeah, Paige? Yeah. Yeah, so this is something we also, um, 
discussed in one of the lab groups where Molly was pointing out like maybe this would be interesting to try with a species that is not as positively thought as the, the sea otter, right? Because um, as you say, like maybe the, the message is perceived as negative uh, probably for the fishermen, like they are the ones who would think negatively about the sea otters. And in this case, people might like wouldn't know. Uh, but we saw we the interesting thing was when we asked them how convincing do you think this is, it was the least convincing, right? So it is, I think it is negative because it's presenting the conflict with people. And that's how like um, the person answering the um, survey would relate to it. Maybe they would see, oh, this is affecting others. Um, that's how I thought of it as, as negative. But Maybe if you have ideas for other negative messages, um, I don't know, like with other species, if they were directly harming, like if we would say, uh, I don't know, like in the case of elephants, if they like cross your, or in the case of um, jaguars, if they come and eat the cattle and you're a rancher, then that's also pretty negative. I don't know, we could try together. <laughs> Mark? Thank you. Shying is here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Like the, yeah. Oh. Sorry. No. <laughs> Sorry, it's been all the animation. Oh. <laughs> this one. All of them. Yeah. Um, so what we did was um, we took the overall mean. Yeah. On the points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can put. Yeah, I, I can put them up. <laughs> this one. This one. One further. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we did a here. We did a one-way ANOVA, and we found significant differences between the means. Yeah. And then it's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, so yeah, so I guess the, the conclusions here apply like to this case. It would be interesting to try it with other species, maybe some that are perceived very negatively, like as you say, sharks, or some that are neutral, and maybe it would be more interesting if we could just shift those attitudes, like people don't really know about them. and. Um, if you just give more information or if you engage them more to be more familiar, to get them to like them more, then perhaps they want to conserve them more, right? And I think we're out of time, but <laughs> we already went for like 10 minutes over. I said we already went like 10 minutes over, so I'm not sure if people have to leave. <laughs>